Wow, another 24 hour video socks for one. Who needs sleep anyway? I'm dying. Help me. I play cyberpunk for 24 hours straight and I'll be honest the game is pretty good if you don't know what cyberpunk is It's basically if GTA 5 and anything futuristic what? came together and had a baby That means open world campaign and John wick from Fortnite and woman I literally had a mission where I was beating up bodybuilders with a water pipe and I ended up beating the entire campaign With two different endings. Well one of the campaigns. I'll explain later. So yeah, it's a pretty good video So if you're part of the percentage that is not subscribed subscribe right now and before the video starts here's a word from our sponsor before we get into the video this video is sponsored by display Yo! display was dead display display Holy is an amazing geez. website that offers millions of different types of posters millions 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 oh my god there's a little of something for everyone you like anime oh my god i love anime they got it oh my god do you like gaming i love gaming they got it oh my god you you like cats? Oh my god, I love you. Guess <laughs> what? You already know. What? They have cats, man. Oh they have cats. God. There's this cat attacking a pirate ship, bro. It can't get better than that. A cat attacking a pirate ship. And guess what? All the posters come in three different sizes. From medium, large, and even extra large. So it can fit anywhere. Oh my god, I can hang it on my wall. Now look at my cyberpunk collection. Oh, oh, oh. oh you like, right? You know these metal posters are legit. Look at that. High quality stamp. And every time you buy one, they plant one tree. Mr. Beast would approve. And look how easy it is to put on. Oh my god, how easy it is to put it on. Simply peel off this sticky thing, slap it on your wall to prevent wall damage, and then take a magnet and slap that onto there and hold it on for a couple seconds. Oh my god, can I slap it onto my mom's fridge? If you want. And then BAM! You can and put on the poster. Yes! Ta-da! It's just that easy. Look how good that looks. It oh fits my god, I can't wait. Perfectly. And that's not even the best part. Display is having an amazing discount right now. If you use my link down below, if you get one to two displays, it is 30% off. Oh my god, that's like almost 69% of the price. And it gets better. If you buy three or more, it's 37% off. Ah! So what are you waiting for? Go get yourself the metal poster from display right now. Use the link right down now. below right now. I I'm going right now. Thanks again for display for sponsoring this video. And uh, let's go check out some cyberpunk. Get the cyberpunk posters. They're very cool. Back to your regular scheduled video. <laughs> After months or even years of waiting, we can finally start playing this game. We had three different campaign choices, which were Nomad, which is like out in the streets. Street Kid is like gang life. And Corpa was like government. I like the car in Street Kid, so I just chose that one. And onto the character selection, you can make anything that you wanted to. And when I mean anything, I mean anything. Like this. B. <laughs> and after a couple years, I made this monstrosity. Oh, did I mention you can change your ding dong size? And the last thing to do was give my character physical attributes, so I put everything in physical strength. He's perfect. I started out in this bar, and you can already tell this game is futuristic when the guy has a metal arm. Turns out I'm looking for some money, and this guy with elephant ears can give me a job. <laughs> Scoot over. Oh, who is this man? Oh, well, basically, Elephant Ears offered me a job to steal this car, and he's gonna give me money. I took the job, and he said he had some friends out back that were gonna take me to the car. What I learned about this game is that there's so many new characters, but about 90% of them, I never see again. Nonetheless, the old man took us to the garage, and there was the car that we needed to steal. We pulled out a device and did some hacker man stuff. I don't know. You started pull. Um, the start button? We thought we did it all right when a man came to rob us. Oh! oh. Hello. Go. Who are you? You can choose what you want to say in cyberpunk, so I chose to floor it. And it didn't even work. I thought it was a dead man when he started throwing me out of the car, but then the police started to arrive, and I thought I was saved. But then I also realized I was the person stealing the car. We all got arrested, and we just traded insults. I'm How waiting. about that? The pig that shatters. And I thought we just got thrown into jail, but turns out they let us go. His name was Jackie, and we ended up becoming friends. How? I don't know how, since he's the one who got us caught in the first place. And then it just played a montage of how we basically became friends for the next oh. couple months by doing, like, all these different missions and whatnot. And I think all of this was just a main introduction to the main story, because that's when the tutorial started playing. I'm being serious. That's when it started teaching me how to play the game, but it's pretty straightforward. Something really cool about the game is that you can hack things like this TV screen, which distracts enemies so you can go up to them and kill them. Good night, girl. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, uh, kill. 
Snap him. With all that out of the way, we are back in the campaign with our first mission with Jackie. Instead of focusing on the mission, I was laughing more of how beautiful my fingernails look. Oh. <laughs> we entered some sort of weird building where there was enemies all over the place, and our objective was to save a woman named Santa. No and I th I'm out. killing him. Oh! <laughs> we were supposed to be very stealthy on our way to save the woman, but I sort of just alerted the guards that I was here, and I don't know why. I didn't care though, I just went all out. Oh, you can't touch this! You can't touch this! So much for stealth. Well, we ended up finding the woman, but turns out she's dead. We called an ambulance so maybe they could save her, but honestly, I think she died because I don't see her for the rest of the game. I didn't understand the point of this mission because it has nothing to do with the campaign. Honestly, I think it was still part of the tutorial because Jackie just showed me my home, which is basically my home base for the rest of the campaign. I woke up the next morning and I had breakfast with my boy Jackie. He had a gift for me, my very own car. At home, easy on the gas, huh? I just ate. So let me just. I'm surprised I didn't get any stars like in GTA 5. We did it right in front of the police! I did it right in front of the police and they did nothing. So I knew I had to take it a step further. I didn't even see that. They were not very happy about it. I drove as far and as fast as I could, and honestly, I was able to get away. Jackie was very happy with my driving that he decided that he was gonna show me a place where I could upgrade my gear. I met a guy named Victor, and he's basically the guy I talked to to, like, upgrade my gear. The stuff was called Cyberware, and honestly, all this stuff just turns me more into a Terminator. I didn't have any money, though, so I couldn't get anything, so it was on to the next thing. Before I went to my first actual campaign mission, I decided to explore the city a little bit. Turns out this place is called called Night City and there's crime going on all the time. So of course I did my civil duty and took out the crime. And you know the funniest part? You can actually pick up dead bodies and carry them around. I am going to place it in front of the police. I was going to place it in front of the cops to see their reaction. I had all oh, criminals. They do not like that. They do not like that. Okay, okay never no, mind. Show them the body. Yeah, that wasn't going to work out. Back to the campaign and it turns out I was going to go meet my big boss. Holy turns out my boss geez. was Dick Snoop Dogg and I was in love with him. Basically, he wanted wanted us to pick up some really good tech from a sketchy dealer. But that's exactly what we were gonna go do. I met up with Jackie and the place was already looking super suspicious. Did I say dangerous? Because there was turrets right behind the door. That's when we met our dealer who looked like a freaking spider. Name's Dum Dum. <laughs> Your name's Dum Dum. His name was Dum Dum. I couldn't even take this seriously anymore. You're not gonna intimidate anyone at all. We got comfortable, sat on his couch, and then he offered me his inhaler. And I was like, poor Dum Dum, he has asthma. I didn't want Dum Dum to feel awkward, so I took his inhaler as well. <laughs> Yeah! Fresh air. He finally showed us the technology that we were getting. It was this amazing spider bot. It literally oh, moves like God. a spider, which is really cool. But then we ran into a problem. They wanted more money. They were really mad. I thought we were all vibing here on the couch, but they just wanted more money. I was somehow able to make them laugh, which made him turn around so we could attack. <laughs> We ended up killing everybody and poor Dum Dum. I had to take him down as well. The guys that we took out dropped some pretty good weapons, so I was able to equip myself with more than just a pistol. But we still had a problem. We had to escape the place, and there was a lot of enemies in our way. Why? Goodbye. Honestly, my main strategy was just to go up in personal and just hold left click. And we actually pulled it off. We took out everybody in the building and even stole that spider robot thing. It was time to tell Thick Snoop Dogg the great news, but first I had more important things to do. And that was taking out random citizens with the new shotgun I got. Who would win? Ah! <laughs> Why are you running? Where are you going? Before I met up with Thick Snoop Dogg, I still had to do one more thing, and that was to go to the place where you go and respect women. I'm just joking. Turns out someone contacted me, and they wanted me to work with them instead of Thick Snoop Dogg. And that person was this woman named Evelyn. She took me to a private room, and I thought something was gonna happen, but she just kept talking and talking about why I should work with her. She made me meet her friend Judy, who's like hacker woman. She wanted to introduce something called a brain dance that is basically a movie that is playing in my head. To summarize it, if you ever use like a replay system from a game that is exactly what this is for basically they were showing me a memory of this woman going into this japanese guy's apartment because we were gonna steal from him we were looking for clues on how to sneak into his apartment and all the weaknesses and where he keeps his loot and whatnot at the end of the day i rejected her offer because i still wanted to work with thick snoop dog that being said it was actually time to go meet up with him and deliver him the spider robot i showed him the spider robot and he was very happy and i even told him evelyn that blue-haired girl that she tried to buy 
buy me from him. And because I told him, he actually offered 10% more money than he originally offered. See, this is why it's good to be loyal, boys. Turns out Snoop Dogg had the same job offer as the blue-haired lady, and we were gonna go raid this Japanese guy's office. Turns out he's got something very valuable in his hotel. And with no time break, we were actually already on our way with a self-driving car. And this self-driving AI car company is owned by Hitman. I mean, that's not his actual name, but look at him. How is that not Hitman? He drove us all the way to the hotel, and it looks like our plan was just to walk in. And somehow, we literally just walked in with a killer robot in our suitcase. Once in the hotel, we don't plan to sell this to Taki-san. We plan to use it against him. We set off the spider robot, and it's on its way to the security room. It was a bit of a mission because we had to go room to room in order to actually get to the security room. I had to distract the guests in every room in order to let the spider robot go through the vents. Eventually, we made it to the security room and hacked the security cameras. That way, they won't see what we're actually doing. Why hack the security cameras? Well, our plan is to actually walk into Taki-san's room and steal whatever he has in his little loot chest. And that's exactly what we did. What could possibly go wrong going inside this guy's room? We found his little treasure chest, and what's inside is actually called a relic, and it's extremely valuable. While we were hacking it, I thought the police spotted us, but it turns out they were just escorting someone really important. We got the relic, but we were a little bit too late. Too late. Your noble's about to walk in. Find cover. I'm just gonna call this Japanese guy the evil guy, and he's about to walk in, so we had to hide. The bad guy was walking in, but look at that bodyguard. He's staring right at us menacingly. To make matters worse, the person that was coming in those planes was actually the bad guy's father, who's even worse. The old guy is considered the emperor and the most deadly man in Night City, and his son doesn't like him. They were trash-talking each other, and the son decided to kill him. The dude literally just killed his father, and just after then, he realizes what he has done. And then he tries to blame it on someone else. And now this makes matters even worse because now security is going to be flooding this building trying to find out who poisoned their father. We couldn't use the same elevator, so we quickly exited through the back. To make matters worse, the police showed up as soon as we were about to escape. Oh, we gotta jump! We gotta jump! Oh! Whoa! Oh my! Well, this isn't good. My boy Jackie is hurt, and so is the relic. This might be a little bit confusing, but the only way to save the relic is actually putting it in your head, like an actual USB. The only problem is that it's highly dangerous because they don't even actually know what is on it. Just so you understand, the chip that he put inside his head, that is actually John Wick, but no one knows this yet. That aside, we still have to escape this building, so we have to take everyone out. You picked the wrong house. I put all my talent points in my strength and my fist, so I I just beat everyone up. Oh, oh, you're still up? Not anymore. I'm not even joking. I beat up everybody in the hotel. Ooh, 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 ooh. Monkey mode. Monkey mode. I mixed it up here and there because this game has a lot of variety. Oh, I like that one. Everything was going well until the freaking Terminator machine showed up. What is that? I did my civil duty by taking him out with my fist. <laughs> Yeah, how do you like me now? We finally made it out of the hotel and Mr. Hitman was waiting for us, so we quickly got in. This guy was driving us out of there fast when Terminator 2.0 almost got us. Oh, oh no! That's a Terminator 3.0! We were able to get away from him, but we were followed by aerial support. I know him on my AR, so I had to take him out with my shotgun, but it worked. Oh yeah, did I tell you Jackie's still really hurt? Well, I have some very sad gamer news, guys. He ends up dying, but he gives me the relic, and I also put that in my head. So now I have John Wick in my head, or in this game, he's called Johnny Silverman. The driver took us to Thick Snoop Dogg, and I was about to tell him the good news that we got the relic, but at the same time, my boy died. Snoop Dogg was really angry that we were all over the news but it wasn't our fault. We didn't even do anything. It was the son who killed the grandpa. He asked if we had the relic, but we had a choice here to tell him if we got the relic or not. Honestly, I stayed loyal and I told him that we got it. <sighs> I was afraid of that. I think I chose the wrong answer because he seemed even angrier now that I brought so much attention to him. So angry, in fact, that they threw me on the ground and uh, shot me in the face and I died. <laughs> Oh, honestly, I thought that was the end of the game and I just chose the wrong decision But then I had some sort of weird dream flashback and I came back alive, but I was actually someone different. I was John Wick. Oh 
Yo! Can you reef? What? What are you doing here? It all makes sense because the relic I put in my head is John Wick, so that means I'm having his memories or something. The memory was weird. It was just me playing in a rock band, which was pretty cool. And then for some reason, it put us on a plane, and I guess we're on a mission now. Now we had a different weapon and everything because we're John Wick, so I wonder how this is gonna go. And I don't even know how to put this lightly. He is completely overpowered. You can one-shot literally anybody. God! Shotgun. Oh, to summarize, the place we're at right now is actually that evil guy's grandpa, and we are gonna blow it up. And I just feel so bad for you guys. But our plan fails, and guess who stopped me? You know, Terminator 3.0? Well, this is him when he was a little bit younger, and his name is Smasher. He brought me to the old man bad guy, and they were just babbling and babbling. I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure this is where they killed John Wick and turned him into that little USB, which we found. And I think that's the whole point of this flashback to show how John Wick turned into a relic, and now he's in our head and just like that a couple moments later it turns out i'm actually alive but i'm in a landfill and there's like snoop dog coming over there to save me question mark turns out snoop dog was forced to save me from this guy who was actually a bodyguard of one of the evil japanese men and then he kills him that's what you get snoop dog for betraying me no, what is snoop going dog. on turns out he's hunting me down because he thinks i poisoned that japanese emperor guy or at least i thought because i woke up in a car next to him and it turns out he was betraying the japanese guy and now we're being hunted down by some very scary people. Who are you? Who are you? Identify yourself. And it turns into an epic motorcycle car chase. Yeah. Oh. But my hope doesn't last long when the guy turns into an actual Eww. ninja. What the? Knife. Nani. This turns into the most insane scene I've ever played in any video game. Oh. 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 Why do I have to keep on reloading? We ended up getting him, but we were still in horrible condition. I still have a bullet in my head. The bodyguard guy, Takimura, took us to the nearest doctor, which is Victor, the guy who does all the cyberware stuff. And he actually saved me. He got the bullet out of my head, but there's some other really bad news. To summarize the bad news, the chip inside my head is Johnny Silverman, or John Wick, and all his memories are replacing my own, till eventually it becomes him. And they can't take it out, because then it, like, kills me. So I only have, like, a couple weeks to live. And Boo Boo, all the other scenes are just them being sad for me that I'm gonna die and whatnot. I don't care. What matters now is that we're back in the open world and my new objective is to find someone who can cure me. But I don't care about that now. What I want to do is buy a new weapon, but a melee weapon. There's a shop right outside my store that sells melee weapons and I decided to buy a steel pipe. It's not even the best weapon, but it's funny. What's obvious now is that I need to try it out, right? Wow. <laughs> It's extremely effective. What I was gonna do now is meet Takimura, the Japanese bodyguard, because he potentially has a way to save me. It's like he actually doesn't know how to save me. He just wants my help in order to expose that Japanese son for killing his grandpa and lying to everyone that's saying that he died from poisoning. I declined his offer because I don't care. I just wanna go save myself. I mean, I'm dying in a couple weeks here. So I was thinking who could potentially save my life and that would be Evelyn, that blue haired girl. The only other person that knows about the relic that we stole other than Snoop Dogg, but he's dead. I pulled up at that bar with my amazing smart car. Oh, but some real bad news. Evelyn is actually not here. She ran away, and we have no idea where she went. Even her friend Judy didn't know, and she wouldn't tell me anything. Hello? Are you ignoring me? She ended up giving me an address of where we potentially could find Evelyn, but no one really knows. On my way there, did I mention that I can actually get to see John Wick now? Because he's like in my head, so he just appears all the time. He usually just trash talks all what I'm saying. Well, I followed the address, and it took me to another place. Turns out this is a place where you meet other people in a very intimate way. And I had the choice to choose between two people, a girl named Sky and a guy named Angel. Problem was, I forgot who the girl was and the guy was, so I left it up to Blaz's coin. That means Angel is Angel the winner. Angel it is! The coin chose Angel, so that's who we were gonna go meet. Turns out Angel was the guy, but I gotta do what I gotta do in order to find Evelyn Parker. Don't put your arm down. Some get comfortable what? here. Yes, this is serious. <laughs> the guy was getting a little too personal and wasn't telling me what I wanted, so I stopped it right there. I questioned him where Evelyn was, but he didn't know, but he knew someone named Tom, who's a friend of her, and he's actually here in this building. I ran upstairs and busted into Tom's little lounge, and he was really scared, me. and I didn't know why. It was probably because I killed a couple people on my way here. Even after I questioned him, he didn't even know where Evelyn was, but he told me another person who might know where Evelyn is, and that is Wood. 
Woodland Parker. So where's this Woodman? Well, it turns out he's in the same building, but up in the VIP area where there's tons of guards. Who cares about guards when you got monkey mode socks for one? I beat my way up all the way there, and I even beat up this guy who had a freaking samurai sword, so I took that away from him. Eventually, I made my way to Woodman's little office, and <laughs> this is my first boss fight. I didn't even care. I went in there with my samurai sword, and I just went shing, shing, shing all the way until there's no health left. It took a bit of time, but Samurai Sokzor 1 is unbeatable. Yes! We hacked into his PC, and we found out where he was keeping Evelyn. I still had to escape the building, though, but with the Samurai Sword, it was pretty much no problemo. The Samurai Sword was cool, but on my way leaving, I put back my pipe, because honestly, it's still 10 times better. Well, there was no time to waste. I got in my Sockmobile, and it was time to go save Evelyn, mostly because I need her to save me. Oh, great. This is not going to Evelyn Parker. There's still someone else we have to meet before we know where Evelyn Parker is. This guy knows where Evelyn Parker is, but I didn't feel like talking to him, so I decided to punch him right in the face. <laughs> yeah! Not only did he tell us where Evelyn Parker is, I also stole all his stuff, so I'm very happy. Finally, we found the warehouse where Evelyn Parker was being held, and I was gonna beat them all up. These are the first enemies that I found kind of difficult, so I actually had to use some sort of AR. Once inside, I was able to be a little bit sneaky, which is nice, because I love the snap kills. Oh! And oh god, no. I think we found Evelyn, and this does not look good. Oh god, she did not look good at all. I felt really, really bad. I honestly felt pretty bad, but I'm just glad that we were able to find her and save her. After talking to like 35 people, she's finally home, but she did not look in good shape. Which also sucks for me, because now she can't save me, because I'm also dying in three weeks. Well, what are we gonna do now? Our main girl that was supposed to save us can't help us anymore. The game didn't tell me what to do either, so I just went around and beat up of crime with my pipe. It's funny that I'm fighting crime, but at the same time, I just stole this car because it was really nice. Also very fast. Eventually, the game told me where to go, and I had to meet this person named Rogue, who was actually friends of John Wick back in the day. Well, they were more than friends, but that's not what's important. She's gonna help me find someone that can save me for a small price of $15,000. I don't have $15,000. I barely have $1,000 to my name. I haven't done any paid jobs. I thought, like, stopping crime, or maybe if I robbed a bank or something, I would get money, but no. Stop oh my, right hello, there, Big Man. <laughs> Big Man is coming. My watch. <laughs> Well, it looks like I have to go find a job, and I don't know where. Good news for me, though, turns out this Hitman driver guy is actually hiring, and he needs my help. So this Hitman guy runs a car company where all the cars are self-driving by him. But a few of his cars have gone crazy, like his AI system has gone mad. And I had to stop him and bring him back to Mr. Hitman. What is that? Whoa. What Why is he the? so mad? Try to take me and I'll crush you. As you can see, one of these cars I need to save is very, very angry, and I had to beat him up. I ended up just shooting him down, and that seems to be what worked. Yeah, there how you do you go. like me now, huh? How fortunate. I've relinked to the vehicle. Thank you. He ended up giving me $5,000 for the assignment. I was rich. And here's the best part. That was just one of many cars that I had to go hunt down and, like, recover for Mr. Hitman. I found the next car, but he wasn't angry. He was actually sad. so sad, in fact, that I had to drive this car all the way back to Mr. Hitman. And what was even more depressing is that he only gave me a thousand dollars for saving this car. That meant I had to go get even more cars, and this one was out in the middle of nowhere. This one was really freaky. It actually thought on its own. I'm a free spirit. An independent, literally thoughtful being. But why do I care, man? I just want my money. I gave him back to Mr. Hitman, and that's three cars down, a couple more to go. On my way to the next car, I got an alert that there was actually a boss nearby, so I was like, why not? Let's just check it out. He's in, like, in a robot suit, bro. This guy was in some sort of super mecha suit, and I did, like, no damage to him. Oh! Oh my god! I was definitely not ready for that boss fight. I went back to hunting down the cars, and one of the cars wanted me to destroy some flamingos because he didn't like them. I don't know what to say, it just got really weird. Only one with chaos within can give birth to a dancing star. And the car after that tried to jump off a bridge, but I had to save him as well. And the last car tried to I'm run dying. away from me, but he got stuck on a <laughs> pile of rocks. Collecting all those cars took me like two hours, but I finally had $15,000 so I could go back and talk to Rogue. I completely forgot why I'm talking with Rogue in the first place, but she knows someone who could save my life because I'm still dying. Rogue actually told me the person who could save my life because he actually created my relic that is in my head in the first place. The only problem is 
that person is in a very secure facility that we have to bust in so we can steal him. And the person that can help me bust into that facility is this woman right here that I'm going to deeply respect for the rest of the game and not look down. I'll be honest, I didn't learn her name for the entire game. Enhance. Basically, from our intel, the guy that we need to steal is going to be setting up shop in this area in a bit, so we're going to set up some traps. Honestly, I thought we were going to blow them all up, but we just ended up just turning on the lights to distract them. But they be light. I really thought we were just gonna blow them all up. Instead, I just beat everyone up with a pipe, which is much better in my eyes. But guess what? We got pranked. The guy that we needed to steal in order to save my life wasn't here. So that means we gotta do more investigating. And what I mean investigating, I mean driving down to the evil guy's lair and taking out all of them with my pipe so we could get some more information. The woman was very proud of me because we learned where the guy is most likely hiding. We were gonna do that the next day, so she just took me out for drinks for tonight. We thought we were in, boys, that we were gonna pass the friend zone today. Just kidding. She hit me with the no, double God, Minecraft please, beds that no. are not even next to each other. This is the saddest thing we've ever seen. <laughs> the next day was here. We knew what facility to hit in order to find the man and uh, we were also taking motorcycles, which was pretty cool. We found the place and it was heavily guarded. There was like machine guys all over the place, so I tried to be as stealthy as possible. Stealth kills might be the only thing that I like more than beating up everyone with a pipe. Somehow I was able to stealth my way all the way through and I found the guy and his name is Healman and supposedly this man could saved my life. So I punched him in the face so I could knock him out. <laughs> we took him back to our apartment and to summarize basically what he's saying, he is unable to save us. Wow, who could have thought? Everyone here is completely useless, but there's actually some good news. The good news is that he is the creator of the relic inside my hand, so that means he has the blueprints for it. And those blueprints can be given to someone who can't save me, so it's sort of good news. Well, I'm done with these people and it's time to go back home. Since everything else didn't work out, that means I have to go back to this Japanese bodyguard guy and he out his plan and he did actually have a plan that plan being to kidnap the sister of that evil Japanese man and prove to her that he killed his father and all of this was gonna happen during a festival but the festival was not happening for a while so we had some time to spare and I started by trying out my new laser weapon that is mwah. I mean I'm testing that out on citizens which I guess doesn't really count but I mean <laughs> it's still funny nonetheless we still have to wait for the festival so that means it's time to do some side quests how fun actually I'm not sure if this this is a side quest because it ends up correlating to the storyline like really well. See this man right here? Well, he's hiring me to do something and I completely forgot what it was because I don't think people realize I've been playing this for 16 hours straight now and I've lost all my brain cells. Basically, what he told me is that there's a gang in that amusement park and he wants me to take them out. And here's the best part. He said if we do this for him, he can actually help me get rid of the relic inside my head. So, win-win. On to the amusement park. I just realized he didn't tell me one thing that everyone he here is a freaking bodybuilder. I mean, just look at this guy. He's got muscles coming out of his muscles. He's like that meme from SpongeBob. Shortly after sneaking in, I was greeted with a giant health bar right above my head, meaning there's a boss right around the corner. This was not just a boss. This is the strongest thing I've ever seen. It had a hammer and it was a woman. I started 1v1ing her with a pipe and honestly, it was extremely effective, probably because I spent all my money upgrading this one pipe. I upgraded a perk as well, so every time I deal damage with me, melee, I actually heal a percentage as well, so I was just going all out. And somehow, I was able to beat the boss with just a pipe. Yeah! Let's not forget about still the hundreds of bodybuilders still inside the building that I couldn't take out with a pipe because there were just so many of them. This is by far the hardest mission I have done so far because it turns out I was severely underleveled when going into this. That didn't stop me, though. I took out every single bodybuilder there. I ain't afraid. My laser rifle did really come in handy because I really needed a decent long range weapon. And just like that, I took out all the bodybuilders and now I could hack into their system in order to stop their cyber attacks or whatever they were doing. You're not gonna believe this. Turns out it was all a setup and they were actually trying to kill me the entire time and there was no purpose of me destroying all those bodybuilders. I can't believe this has happened twice. I've been so nice, but I get betrayed by Snoop Dogg and now this guy. I mean, what's up? So I decided to walk right back into his building and say, what's up? Why did you try to get me killed? And he was so shocked. It was actually unbelievable. You returned. How? 
how you manage this. I told him the only thing I cared about was getting this relic outside my head because I only had a week or two to live. And he told me before this mission that they could do it. So I still had trust in them that they could save me maybe. He was so impressed that I lived that he called his scientist girl and they're gonna see if they can save my life. Spoiler alert, they couldn't. Ah, oh, who could see that coming? Well, it's time to go back to Mr. Japanese bodyguard man because he is my only hope at this time. But before I went to go do that, I really felt like I needed a better weapon and just better stuff in general. I took this side quest where if I beat up this certain army vet that I would get a really good sniper rifle that he was carrying. You see it? It's right next to him. It's like one of the most OP snipers in the game. I had no idea how strong this guy was, but it was $12,000 to fight him and have a chance to win the sniper rifle. It went horribly, horribly wrong. Turns out he can kill me in two hits. About seven tries later, after learning all his combos and his moves, I finally beat him up. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Yes! And then I get hit with another twist. Get him! He gets full health again and all his friends started to gang up on me. I started panicking, but at least we could use our weapons now. And I started taking them out with all sorts of things. Oh, did I mention that I got an upgrade where I can shoot rockets out of my arm like Iron Man? After beating up all his goons, the only guy left was the army veteran guy, but he seemed to be broken or something. He was just glitched there. At least you can understand how much health this guy actually has now because I was beating him up with my my fist and right now his health is barely going down and I'm using a freaking shotgun that lights him on fire for crying out loud after a while I finally took him out which was amazing because now I got the sniper rifle this sniper rifle was ridiculous it had damage going all the way up to a thousand the funny part is that I wasn't even high level enough to even use it in battle yet well hopefully I level up by the time I get to another boss or something back home meaning going back to this Japanese guy because it's time to hear the rest of his plan what he wants me to do is break in to this main police facility so I can learn what their security pattern will be during the festival. Which is really important because in order to kidnap the sister of that evil man, we need to know what kind of security they're gonna have during the festival. Honestly, at this time, huh? I didn't have the brain power to think of some sort of master plan in order to sneak in undetected. Instead, I took my motorcycle and I drove right inside the police facility no, and alerted God, everybody please, no. including that giant robot that I was here. I was pretty lucky as well because I drove right into the room that actually had the computer with all the data but now I still had to escape which was sort of a problem because there was army soldiers all over the place honestly this was not as difficult as the huge bodybuilder mission so I kind of just speed ran right through it I also found the other computer that I had to hack into to get even more data which was perfect and all I had to do now was escape the building which was no problem because it's easy to run away from the bad guys technically I'm the bad guy in this situation but it's for a greater cause and now we're ready we have the data about the security guards during the festival so so we will be able to kidnap the sister easily. A little time passed by and the parade is already starting. This actually looks really cool. Sadly, I won't be watching. My goal is to take out all the security all around the place. The amount of parkour I had to do was a bit crazy. I had to go from like building to building. And the scary part, there was traps all around the place. So I had to be like super sneaky and hack it all. But eventually I made my way to some of the security people like the sniper and I beat the frick out of him, man. I would have used the pipe, but honestly the reload animation on the shotgun is just so satisfying and it lights the enemies on fire don't worry I still use the pipe as well because honestly it's still the better weapon I made it to the last room where the final sniper was camping and I learned for the first time that this laser gun can shoot through walls I didn't even know this till now it's actually shooting through the wall so I don't even have to see my enemies now and just like that I took out all the security or at least I thought I did I entered into another boss battle and this guy is a freaking ninja teleporting all over the place with two red blades who would win Double lightsaber man or one pipe man? Place in your bets now. You're not gonna believe this. I ended up taking this guy out too with just my pipe. And I didn't even have to heal myself. Like, I just kept on regaining health and health by hitting him more and more. And that's all the security. So now it's up to Takimura to go kidnap that sister. We hacked into the security cameras. And that is the woman we need to convince that her brother killed their own father with his own bare hands. And we're gonna do that when Takimura kidnaps her by, like, putting her to sleep. I thought he shot her at first. First, and I almost freaked out. Well, we kidnapped her and put her in this room and we started telling her the entire story on how her brother strangled their own father and she actually believed us. But we were rudely interrupted by the government because they were searching for this woman that we kidnapped so they decided to blow up the entire
entire apartment. But luckily, they did not get the chance to arrest us. Instead, they just wanted to blow up the entire apartment building. And somehow, we managed to escape, so props to us. The fact that she believes us is the best news we have ever gotten, and on top of that, she also told me that she could save my life. I know like 13 other people also said that, but I have a gut feeling that she is the one. Well, the problem now is that the Japanese guy stole his sister back, so now we have to go kidnap her. And by the way, this guy's helping us now. Well, there's gonna be a lot of security around the place, so it's time to smash some heads. Name's V. That was easy, but now we still have to break into the actual house, right? Honestly, I was gonna go use stealth, but using a pipe is just 10 times more fun anyway, so why would I even be stealth? And my laser rifle is just so good, it just... Mwah. We got through all the security, and now it's just time to pick up the sister. We took a plane, and it was time to go to a meeting where we'll be able to convince other powerful people on what the brother actually did to his father. So yeah, we just made our way to the main Japanese evil guy's tower. Uh-oh, major plot twist. Turns out this old man that got choked out by his son is still alive. It's because we're in the future and what they did was upload his mind in a bunch of computers so he's basically like AI. The reason she showed me that this man is still alive is because this man gives me full permission to take out his son which is pretty cool. And that's what we're gonna do because now we got a meeting with all the important people including that Japanese son who killed his father. And she told everyone here that her brother strangled their father in order to get a lot of power and this was their reaction. Fascinating. Absurd! What you say. Of course they didn't believe us, so then they decided to kill us all. Oh! But fear I do not have because Pipe Man is here. I took out every single police officer with no mercy. I didn't stop there. I made my way to the Japanese building and I did the same to everybody else. Flying killer robots? It's no problem for the man with a pipe. After defeating floors of enemies, I was finally high level enough to use my new sniper that I got. And talk about good timing because as soon as I hit level 22 so I could use the sniper, I entered the boss battle room. Was I loud enough? I said boss battle against Terminator 3.0. Look how scary this guy and he's charging at me man what am i supposed to do you won't believe here alive oh my goodness he's a man with his words at this point i've already taken out every single boss with my pipe so i feel like i need to take this guy out with my pipe as well and it was actually working i was giving him the biggest beating of his life and i wasn't even taking that much damage i thought i was gonna win until i got him to 50 percent when he activated his second phase he ran away and started sending in those crazy like zealot teleporting soldiers at me that are just like shing 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 all over the place and I'm freaking out. And it got even scarier when he started shooting thousands of missiles at me. What am I supposed to do? I felt like this was a really good time to try out my new sniper, but honestly, I have no idea how much damage this was actually doing to him. I decided to charge him with my pipe and you're not gonna believe this. He actually glitched inside the wall. You gotta be kidding me, Cyberpunk. I'm the biggest fight of my life. He's just glitched inside the wall and his own missiles are hurting himself. Don't prolong the inevitable. It got even worse. He stopped firing the missiles, so he was just one giant walking stick man or something. I don't even know. Oh, he is not even moving anymore. He's just accepting his defeat. We have done it. We have broken the boss. Poor Terminator 3.0. I think he just couldn't handle that he was losing to a pipe. Johnny Silverman or John Wick would be really proud of me because this is the guy who got him captured in the first place. After defeating the final boss, it was time to meet the evil Japanese man, and honestly, he was already crying on the floor. The evil man and his sister had a family family moment, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Just save my life now, woman. I'm nearly about to collapse, but they're gonna save my life, so I'm happy. After a couple moments, I wake up in some sort of hospital, so it seems like I'm okay. I had this woman come over here and do tests on me to make sure if I'm all okay and everything, but they didn't tell me any information. They were just asking me these really weird questions. It started getting, like, really weird. Like, I would wake up every single morning, and the same thing would happen every single day. This woman would come and ask me a series of questions. Cognitive function test. You hear that music it just started getting like really trippy and stuff and i would solve that rubik's cube every day i'm not joking literally the next day i wake up she asked me to solve the rubik's cube again cognitive function test i mean the music was getting louder more trippy i mean what do you want from me i i don't know how to solve this thing eventually the pace just got faster and faster and the music was just getting scarier and scarier and she was just like flipping through all her tests eventually i got so mad that i threw her rubik's cube 
I've had it. She was not very happy about that. I didn't care. I was so mad that I started breaking everything in my room because I was so confused. Nobody was telling me anything. Like, am I saved? Am I fine? Am I good? But finally, after smashing my entire room up, this guy came and he was about to deliver me some news. He said that he did the best to try to save me and all he did was prolong my death for three months. I was like, are you serious? What kind of ending is this? This is so depressing. I'm gonna die anyway. Honestly, I think all of this was just because I punched him in the face. He gave me two choices if I wanted to return back to earth and live my final three months before I died as a human being or they would take my mind and upload it onto a computer and I would work for him as a pilot what kind of horrible decision is this and of course I chose to live my final three months on earth because I felt like that guy was a bad guy or something and the game ended just like that lesson learned never trust anybody not Snoop Dogg not even John Wick nobody man everyone is evil well you still have four more hours socks for one what are you gonna do since you already beat the game. Let me sum it up as quick as I can because this video is already too long. The first thing I did was choose a different ending. So instead of going to Earth, I decided to get my mind uploaded to an AI and see what would happen. I thought you would turn me into like a Terminator or something, but honestly, I just laid in this chair and it just ended with me smiling with my horrible pink teeth. Like, I don't even understand. I'm serious. That was it. Nonetheless, once you finish the game, you can actually go back to the open world and I know exactly what I want to do. I looked through my side quests and I looked for the biggest and baddest boss and I found it the ultimate fight club I would fight the champion right away and it was actually this woman and she turns out to be the ultimate Karen I thought I could beat her up easily but within one hit she already put my health at 55 taking out 200 HP not only that her health is absolutely ridiculous I have to do like 10 punches in order to only do 1% of damage to her health and every time I lose to her she does the most annoying voice line ever I won I won I won I fought her for maybe a solid 30 minutes and I couldn't get her health less than 90%. Like, that's how hard she was. Honestly, I think I'm just extremely underleveled in order to be fighting this match. After that disaster, I decided to meet up with this woman again that I deeply respect and we decided to fight some bad guys. She was so happy that I beat up all those bad guys that I almost got to put my Minecraft bed next to her and she rejected me again. Why is everyone so mean in this game? I am not sure. I decided to forget them and focus on myself and get the coolest clothes possible. After a little bit of time, I made this character. I mean, look at all that swag. I mean, I look awesome. I look even cooler riding the bike into the sunset. There was only one more thing I wanted to do left, and that was unlock John Wick's super OP pistol, which is absolutely amazing. There was actually a side quest I could do to unlock it. I just had to beat up all these bad guys. And just like that, I unlocked John Wick's pistol with that amazing reload animation. So now my whole life is complete. Well, that's gonna wrap up my 24-hour cyberpunk experience. If you want to see more cyberpunk, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. I'm just glad that I got to beat everyone up with a pipe. Sucks for